ships move the money that make the world move. Word navigates those large international ships. How often are international ships required to be serving in Maritime or to protect our seas and waters by way of our local Bahamas Defense Force. It is Force. very sad to say that out of 1,500 plus ships that are registered under the Bahamian flag, only a very small amount of Bahamas are employed. Maritime matters. And pleasant good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Maritime Matters. Whether you're listening via Radio Wave or 97.5 FM, via an internet app, via Cable Bahamas, Channel 951, or BTC Flow TV, Channel 606, we appreciate you and we humbly welcome you to our show. We now encourage you to check out on our YouTube page, Maritime Matters Bahamas. Here you can listen into all of our previous shows at your own leisure. So feel free to hit us up on YouTube, go into search, pull up Maritime Matters Bahamas, and go to town. Again, pleasant good evening. I am Captain Glenn Bain. This is show number 31, people. Numero tres, that's how you say it? Uno. I think that's it. This show, as it's the last Tuesday of the month of August, we will engage no guest. Instead, we will have an open maritime line for you to call in with any maritime matter come to your mind. Our primary discussion, of course, will focus on additional reception facilities for cruise ships throughout the Bahamas. So please, stay tuned and chime in with your views on this or any other maritime topic. Again, we have an open line. So anything maritime come to your mind, you can shoot it out. We will engage. Our sponsors for tonight's show are the usual. One-on-one -on -one pharmacy. Yes, you know the deal on them. You want royal treatment? Check them out. My little cousin Shantia Heal McBride and her lovely team at One on One Pharmacy. Beautiful helpers, beautiful pharmacists, they can get it done for you. Fill your prescription at the store or send your refills via the online site oneononepharmacy.com. Yeah, they high tech. You don't even have to go to the store. Just go on oneononepharmacy.com and you just roll out what you want. They'll prepare that in the store. And when you reach, just get your package and pay a couple dollars because it don't be much. And that one over. They have two locations, East Street South and Charles Sanders Highway. You don't know the deal. You walk in the door, check my good cousin Steph. Well, I don't know how long she could be here. Talk to the day. Say, girl, you don't go on Freeport yet? Boy, don't put more on me. But you know, that's, that's the time. I say, Steph is my good cousin. Check out. And you will be treated with utmost royalty. We are also sponsored by Bahamas Maritime Connection. You know what we do? We provide a full slate of ISPS Maritime Security Services. You know the deal. Best in the business. Oldest in the house. Bahamas Maritime Connection. Thirdly, we're sponsored by Totally Secured Security and Investigation Services. They are located, they are headquartered, 8 Mile Rock, Grand Bahama. But they take care of Freeport too. You know, 8 Mile Rock is the biggest settlement. So they say, we won't be in the biggest settlement. But they take care of the whole island. Once you need security guard duties or security investigations, just give my good boy Andrew Starr up a hail. His cell number is 819-8944. He... And a certified security team will see you straight. That's totally secured security. Telephone contact 819-8944. To listening audience out there, it will be remiss of me to go any further. Not introduce my wonderful producer. Best of the business, ladies and gentlemen. I introduce to you the insatiable. The man of the hour, the man with the power, he is able, he is quite capable. The one and only, Craig Gibson. Yes, and he salutes to the crowd. Boy, if y'all could see him, y'all see that big salute. I don't know if he's a military man, boy, but that's a salute. You're listening to Maritime Matters, people. On this show, we talk 
Maritime. Maritime matters as weekly at 19.30 every Tuesday here on Love 97 FM. The primary purpose of this show is to highlight persons that made significant contributions to the Maritime in the Bahamas and to sensitize all Bahamians of opportunities in the maritime sector. And I can tell you that over the next couple of weeks, we got a lineup for you. People who have made it in maritime and they're willing to share their experiences. We got a lot coming up, people. So continue to listen to Maritime Matters. Of course, halfway through the show and not halfway the night, I open the lines in a minute. Because I know you all got a lot of maritime issues we need to address. You'd recall that last week we did Porter's Key. Week before that, we did line handling. Today, we could be dealing with cruise ships, where cruise ships could go, where cruise ships can go, why cruise ships can't go certain places. But we will open the lines in a minute. The number that you need to call is 326-8255. To reach me or reach us, 326-8255. Let's again highlight our outstanding Maritime heroes. And may their souls continue to rest in peace. I'm talking about the great skipper of the HMBS Flamingo. Champion man that he is, or he was, Senior Commander Amos Roll. Again, let's talk too about our previous port controller extraordinaire. I call him the greatest port controller that ever will be. His name hailing deep from Exuma, Mr. Leon Flowers. Again, deep from Exuma, in the keys, Daniel Key, sloop sailing pioneer, the legendary Captain Raleigh Gray. On that note, I'd like to give tribute to the Smith family from Pink Pearl as we buried Helen on Sunday. Helen is a staple state, stateswoman in that Staniel Key community. May her soul continue to rest in peace. We're going to miss Helen quite a lot. And bringing up the rear, or is that from the front? We got the Olympic sailing gold medalists. So David Knowles and Cecil Cook. Again, the only Olympic medal the Bahamas had for decades, and certainly the only Olympic medals we will see or we have seen in any maritime Olympic events. Maritime includes sailing, it includes swimming, what else it include? All kinds of things. But so David Knowles and, and Cecil Cook would be the two that brought home the bacon. Of course, that's prior to the Bahamas being independent, but they are Bahamians, and those medals are for the Bahamas. We are talking maritime, people. You're listening to Maritime Matters. At this point, we'll move to our first break, and when we return, we will give those numbers again for you to call because we're going to move into our discussion on port facilities around the Bahamas are tentative and possible places where we could put port facilities to receive cruise ships. We want each island to have a cruise ship being able to come there and come to a dock. We don't want our anchors dropping. Come to a dock so that that island can have those thousands of people coming to see what's going on. Stay tuned. Bahamas Maritime Connection Limited. We offer first-class maritime security services throughout the Bahamas and the wider Caribbean. As experts in maritime security, we specialize in production of ISPS assessments and plans, verification audits, certified familiarization training, and port security consultancy, just to name a few. Our services also include provision of a security force to maintain all required ISPS facility security compliance. For all your maritime security needs, Visit us today in Nassau at our East Street South location or in Freeport in the Kipling Building. Call us at 392-3515 or follow us on all social media platforms. Bahamas Maritime Connection, 
your leader in maritime security. Let's help you make the connection. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Welcome back to Maritime Matters. Again, we will open the lines. Our number to call will be 326-8255. That's 326-8255. We are trying to circumnavigate, circumnavigate this country of the Bahamas, this beautiful country of ours, and find places where we think it will be easy fit for cruise ships to call. And we don't want to leave no island out. So any island getting leave out, and you from that island in particular, please let us know what time it is so we can get that fixed. So here we are. Cruise ship ports. Right now we got quite a few. Um, I, didn't, I, I can't tell you how much in numbers. But I know we, we got at least at least about seven or eight places where cruise ships currently go. And if you look from the west, we got Bimini with a dock where cruise ship could come. Um, further south from that, we would have Ocean Key, um, which is another place where cruise ships can go to a dock and walk off the ship without hopping in a tender. And this is where we want to go. We, we want to cut out the tenders. Of course, there are some places where it's going to be a little bumpy sometimes, and maybe the cruise ship wouldn't be able to go in. Because, you know, we need places where the ocean touches the land. And in that case, let's discuss some of these places. Of course, in Grand Bahama, we have, there's only one Freeport Harbor, the Deepwater Harbor itself, is where cruise ships currently go. And do we have other places in Grand Bahama where we think we can just put an abutment or jetty going out into the sea. Wherever the, the ocean touches the land, where you got deep water coming in and it just needs to navigate itself um, after you do a little bit of dredging to put that ship on a dock where those three, four, or 5,000 passengers, in some cases 6,000 passengers, can just walk off the ship and go ashore. And, of course, you will have, just like you have in Nassau Harbor and Freeport Harbor, um, the taxi drivers, the, 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 the horse and carriage, you will have the um, dive companies, everybody just, just, a, just they're waiting so that these people can have activities on these different islands. We, the Bahamas, are blessed with beautiful waters. We are blessed with beautiful people. And there's no reason, in my opinion, why we can't have every single island, every single um, island where we have settlements or even a single settlement like we got some single settlements Ragged Island, Inagua you know where people can come off the ship and just enjoy that one island of course they'll have dive sites um, of course they'll have maybe some caves in some of the islands um, they would have um, just places where people could hang out and have a few drinks and talk with the local people. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of tranquility. They can have their own private beaches. It's just so much these out islands can offer to a cruise ship with thousands of people coming to stop every now and then. And it does a lot for the island, and it will do a lot for cruise ships having so many more destinations. We are on the doorsteps, right on the front porch of the U.S., Oh, you won't call it the back porch, back porch, whatever. Por we 
They can't hardly get anywhere unless they pass through our waters, unless they go going down to Mexico, right? But if they go in beyond us, that's fine. We ain't got no problem with that. But while you're passing through the Bahamas, we're going to give you options, options, and options. So you wouldn't have any reason why you got to make a, a day and a half trip to get somewhere when you could stop in the Bahamas once or twice along the route and, and, and it, it, it will be, you know, a tranquil stop just so that the people wouldn't have to wait so long before they have more activities on the itinerary of these ships. So, again, the numbers to call, 326-8255. I mentioned Grand Bahama. We know Nassau. I mentioned Bimini. I mentioned um, that, uh, Ocean Key. Those would be places so far that I would have mentioned. And in addition to those, we would have, there's not an Abaco, strangely enough. You know, Abaco used to have a cruise ship stop just up off Treasure Key. And I remember they used, to, they used to anchor off and tender into Treasure Key. But, you know, we're trying to get away from that anchoring off and tendering. Why? Because that calls for additional time. That calls for additional risk. Because, you know, somebody coming off the ship going on to tender and coming off the tender going on to land, that, that, that leaves room for, for, for accidents, right? We're trying to get away from that. So we want them to walk off the ship straight on a dock using the ship's gangway or beautiful gangway like coming off a plane. And in, in situations like that, you wouldn't have a challenge as to people getting injured as a result of, of that crossing. So... That's Grand Bahama, Freeport, to be exact. And then we have, of course, the Bimini chain has, um, Resort World has a dock in North Bimini, or at North Bimini. And Ocean Key has a dock for MSC Cruises. That's, that's the, the big, well, the third biggest cruise line. Actually, it'll be the fourth biggest cruise line, MSC Cruises. Um, after Disney... Royal Caribbean, Norwegian Cruise Line, and then I think you have MSC. And they have their own cruise ship port now at Ocean Key. Prior to that, there was none at Ocean Key. So moving on down the line, we got two at Berry Islands. Those two would be Great Stirrup Key and Poco Key. And Great Star of Key would be um, Norwegian Cruise Line, NCL. And Coco Key would be Royal Caribbean. RCL or RCCL as we know it would be Coco Key. And, and it's, it's only within two years, I think it was, within the past three years for sure, that the dock at Coco Key was completed. Now, we don't have a dock at Star of Key as yet. They intend to put one based on my understanding, but, you know, that's going to take some time to, to be in place. So they're still actually anchoring off and tendering at Stirrup Key. But Coco Key has an actual dock where the ship goes all the way to the dock and people walk off the ship onto the, the, the jetty or the abutment or the dock or whatever they refer to it as, and they walk onto the key. So... Moving along the line, we said there was not an Abaco, but you know, Abaco have keys. And what used to be Gorda Key is now Castaway Key. Castaway Key is owned by the Disney Corporation. So Disney ships, all of them that operate in this hemisphere, and that's, that's about three or four of them, they all home port or have, have, they always make their a stop to their own cruise ship port at Castaway Key, which is just directly west of Sandy Point Abaco. Well, of course, it's not linked to the land, but when they get off that ship, there's a dock that accommodates, you know, Disney have some of the largest, ship, largest ships in the world, a dock that accommodates those large ships. And they built that dock there because, of course, Gorda Key always had a runway, but 
It never really had a dock where ships could go all the way in. And they had to do a lot of dredging and all the rest of what, 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 what it takes for a cruise ship to be facilitated with a dock. And where else we got? Moving along to Eleuthera. Okay, Eleuthera has no cruise ship docks, but we know that I think it's um, Lighthouse Point is it, it's to, the, to the very southeastern extremity of the island of Eleuthera. Um, Disney is again trying to make home for a second um, Disney-owned cruise ship port. And again, they're going to put in a dock. See, Disney already understand that, you know, you don't make stops where you got a tender uh, because it, it takes so much away from, 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 from the experience. And it opens the door for quite a bit of exposure, as they call it, liabilities that you really don't want. I mean, when you, if you don't have an option, then, you know, you take those liabilities in, in certain cases. I've been to Cayman Island one time, and all the cruise ships, when they go to Cayman Island, they anchor off. And they got tendering service, and I can tell you, those tenders sometimes is choppy, and it's kind of difficult, especially with, 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 with people who are up in age. I wouldn't call myself old yet. But people who are up in age and, and you know, they kind of feebly even to come down on a normal dock. You can imagine them trying to get on and off a tender that is riding up and down the ship. It's not a very easy thing to do. Um, but, you know, I don't think the government of, of Cayman Islands is, is allowing any docks on that ocean side, that western side. Um, so the ships, the cruise ships got to gotta make do with what they have. And that... Uh, Cayman Islands is a, a crucial stop to a lot of cruise ships. They love, they love that stop. I think most of the passengers love that stop as well, so they, they can't just ignore it. So that's Lighthouse Point. And if we continue to move down the islands of the Bahamas, I don't think any other island has a dock that can facilitate or accommodate a cruise ship. So that's why we're here. We're here to identify, based on our knowledge, and some of you out there in, in, in the listening audience are from some of these islands. You know where on your island a cruise ship, where the ocean almost touched the rock, and if you put a dock out there, the cruise ship would be able to, to secure itself to that dock without doing too much dredging and, 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 and all the rest of that. And in some of these cases, those docks would be away from the highways that is already in place. So it may, even, it may even be necessary, once we decide we can put a dock there, to run a short road that leads from the dock to the highway. Because, of course, if you're going to put a dock, when a dock is there, the cruise ship passengers would need to have a smooth ride to the highway. Now, some of those islands, say, you know, even a highway ain't too smooth. But we got to work with what we get. So now that we pointed out a name, basically all of those islands that do have a dock, let's start to look at some of the possibilities. How could we make the Bahamas, instead of having six or seven places where there are docks, and, and in, in most of those cases, as you may have realized, they only house their own ships. So then, like these cruise ships could just stop there because these private ports don't even want any other type ship other than their ship calling at, 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 at their facility that they created for, for themselves. So this is where the government comes in, eh? And the government, to the extent where you could have the PPP, I mean, we talked about Porter's Key last week and how we can engage a PPP, a PPP, Meaning, pub, private public partnership, or is it the other way around? I still don't quite. I, 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 it, it's probably public private or private public partnership, but it's a partnership between the government and private entities. And in this case, I believe that the private entities could be the Bahamian people, because we have shown that from the public. You put out an IPO and we can raise the funds. We've done so for APD. We've done so for Prince George Wharf. Over $150 million and a lot of money turned back. 
So once the Bahamian people realize that this is a good investment, my rate of return is going to be on point, they're more than happy to invest. Because, you know, we got a lot of money. People may think we're poor, but we ain't poor, we ain't broke. We're the richest island or country in the Caribbean, as far as I, I've been told. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I, based on what I know, I, I think the Bahamas is, if not the richest among the three richest um, countries in the Caribbean. So we got money. We put out that IPO, and there's a great possibility that money can come flowing in because we know that if we put these cruise ship berths in place, those cruise ships will be more than happy to utilize them. And as you have seen, just like I've seen, it's growing all the time, but it's growing among the private companies doing it only for themselves. So we can't let them take all the spots. We need to get some spots. The government, we need to kick in. We need, we need to, like I say, do our survey. I've done a, a brief survey um, to prepare for the show. But we need to do our survey. And when we finish our survey, we're going we gonna to know where we could put these docks. So... We got Grand Bahama. I'll start out with Grand Bahama. Where could we put a dock on Grand Bahama that is very close to the ocean, and once it's in place, cruise ships can use to make it a calling point? I mean, yeah, they got Freeport, but you know, Freeport is owned by the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Um, in and out of Freeport is, is kind of expensive. I mean, the turnaround in Freeport is, is, is more expensive than, than, than I think every, probably every, every port in the Caribbean. And I could be wrong. But, you know, Freeport is not like coming in and out of Nassau. And that's, that's one of the reasons why Freeport is limited with the amount of cruise ships they see. Because the cost in and out of Freeport is not cheap. Eh? So, if you get another place in Grand Bahama that is not owned by the port. So, we're talking about either out west or out east, for those of you who know how Freeport is, is set up. The port basically owns the middle of, 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 of the island, in the middle area right around the harbor. But going out west to Eight Mile Rock and Holmes's Rock and West End and, and all the rest of that, um, you know, that's, that's not owned by the port. So the port wouldn't be in control of fees that cruise ships got to use if they use those, those areas. We got Selman Point. We got Smith's Point. Those are two places I saw on the map where the ocean goes very close to the land. And an abutment or dock jetty, jetting off from the land in, into the sea. Enough so that a cruise ship could tie up without, you know, a big volume of a large amount of dredging being done. That's all you need. You're not going to be able to use it every day of the year. But at least 90% of the times, you'll be able to use this dock. So I want to hear from some of you Freeport people. The number to call again, 326-8255. We're talking about cruise ship facilitation all around the Bahama Islands. We're talking about building docks, places, places where the ocean goes nearer to the land so that you don't have to worry too much about dredging, but you can put an abutment or dock jetty in out, like they did at Bimini, right? Like they did at, 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 at um, in the Berry Islands there. Uh, not Stir Up Key, the other one, Coco Key. They just found a spot where the ocean comes near to the land, and they put a jetty coming out. And now the ship can go straight there, and they had to do minimum dredging, if any. And all the family islands have areas where ocean come straight up to the land. So let's find some of those places. Andrus. Boy, you know, we don't even have to mention Andrus. Andrus got Morgan's Bluff. Do you know what Morgan's Bluff did prior to what's going on there? Now? I mean, ain't nothing going on in Morgan's Bluff now. But Morgan's Bluff used to be the place where those water badges and those deep, laden water barges. They used to draw like 27 and 28 feet when they full. They would go to Morgan's Bluff to get the water and they would badge the water from Morgan's Bluff to Nassau. 
And, well, of course, that whole operation have been replaced with what they call reverse osmosis or water desalination systems that are set up around Nassau. And we can get enough water without having to barge water anymore. So that barge operation no longer exists. We had the Titus, we had the Dolphin, we had the Mini Lily. We had quite a few. Then we had just, just different barges, the tugs um, 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 moved. And, and we kept improving, improving, until the last two we ended up with is, is the Dolphin and the Titus. Of course, the Dolphin was the smaller of the two. The Titus, huge barge. And like I said, when they full, they going down, they need like 28, 27, 28 feet to clear. So the harbor of Morgan's Bluff has already been dredged to a clearance of at least 28 feet. Cruise ships need about, what, 32, 33, let's say 35 feet. So you, you, another 10 feet, 7 to 10 feet on top um, of what is there, we, we dredge down about 10 feet more. And that is ready for cruise ships. Cruise ships could come from the ocean. And the thing about it is they have a big space inside where you could create turning basin. You can create more than one dock. And, 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 and this, you already have this in place, you know. You only got to tidy it up. Get a dredger to come down there, dredge out where you need it to dredge out. It's not going to cost a humongous amount of money. And this is a protected harbor. This is like Nassau Harbor and Freeport Harbor. So there's no reason why, in my opinion, we shouldn't jump on this opportunity to make Morgan's Bluff one of the premier cruise ship stops in the country. And it ain't far. You can go to Morgan's Bluff. It ain't far from Nassau. Well, it's kind of far from Freeport in the context of, of, of the whole Bahamas. But again, it can be an additional stop for all cruise ships. Not just one cruise ship decide they can buy Morgan's Bluff. Because it could happen. They can decide, a cruise ship company now decide they want to buy Morgan's Bluff. And then we start raising hell, we up in arm. Oh, these cruise ships want everything. Why don't we, without the cruise ships approaching us, Get Morgan's Bluff, whip it in shape, do the IPO so that very many people could own it, and start having cruise ship visits. Do you know what that will mean for North Andres? That would mean that they have thousands on a daily basis, thousands of, of, of visitors coming in. Um, and for activities, North Andres, could, North Andres got all kinds of activities they, they, they could provide for these people. You got tours, you got water sport activities, you got, I wouldn't talk about the, but, but the, the bone fishing and the, 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 the deep sea fishing, and you, you can do it all from Morgan's Bluff, I can tell you. Morgan's Bluff will probably be a much better call than Nassau. Because, you know, you don't have no crime in North Andres. Well, you got crime everywhere. But in the context of things, you quite technically ain't have to worry about no crime for those visiting guests. If you make Morgan's Bluff a cruise ship call in the Bahamas, and that's so readily easy to do. I see we got a caller on the line. Let me just engage my caller. I don't know if they're going to be talking about Morgan's Bluff, but whatever they're going to be talking about, we can roll with it. Caller, you on Maritime Matters. Good evening to you, and thank you for calling. Good evening, Captain Bain. This is Captain Bain. Captain Brain, my good buddy. Man, look here. Boy, I'm, I'm so happy to hear from you. I was wondering if anybody out there listening. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening attentively, and um, I think it's a very interesting topic, the um, interesting show. Um, and I can start with Morgan's Bluff. I, I, I just believe, uh, Jeff, what do, you, what do you think about this? Because I, I'm thinking I've been in several, I've been in quite a number of meetings when we will have met with the cruise lines and whatnot um, to negotiate some of these um arrangements that we that we will that we consider and, and, and I just so simply I don't believe that we have the right people at the at the table negotiating for on our behalf as Bahamians because seemingly the cruise ships get everything that they want out of the deal and the Bahamian people get virtually nothing. I talk about even to the extent that you know when we look at Great Circuit, you remember all the uh, the the water sport activity, everything is owned by the cruise lines. Once they come in, 
they we allow them to take over and we allow them to make um if if if, if a Bahamian create a tour and that tour causes that said they charge fifty dollars per person, the cruise line charges a hundred dollars per person and, 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 and they seemingly make the lion share in some cases even more than the Bahamian who's running the tour. So I, I just think that we when we look at all these possible opportunities for Bahamians in, in, in the various islands, destinations, that we have to have the right people at the table because we, we, we the Bahamian people are not getting um, what they ought to be getting in terms of what, what, what uh, in terms of um, when juxtaposed with the cruise lines of what they're actually getting. What do you say about that? I, I, would, I would want to play the devil's advocate here because I, I, while I agree with what you're saying, we got to remember, first of all, that the cruise, the cruise ship is bringing the bacon. They, if, if I am bringing 3,000 people to your restaurant, let's say I'm bringing 30 people to your restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. And I want to leverage with you. Look, I, I could guarantee you 30 people in your restaurant every night of the week. I can say to you, well, now, nah, if I bring in these people to you, I, I want my kickback. I, 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 I bring in them to you. So I want you to give me at least $20 a person back from, 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 from me bringing. And, and some of these restaurants do this for taxi drivers. Taxi driver bring um, 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 tourists to them. They're giving them so much per head. The taxi driver get up front just for bringing those people to that restaurant. But I'm saying that on, 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 on economy of scale, the cruise ships know that these Caribbean countries depend heavily on these tourists that they bring. Because if you take out what they bring to us, we're really dead in the water. Why don't we look at harnessing the fact that we know they're going to bring them, let them get them. But why don't we put some facilities in place so that they have no control over it? Now remember, when you, when you go to, to a place like, like uh, Great Star Key or Coco Key, and, 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 and Castaway Key, these places are owned by that cruise line. So, of right. course, they want to leverage the amount of money they could make by putting that in place and bringing the people. They own two things. They own the ship and they own the place where the people come in. Yeah. So, uh-huh. so they want to leverage, leverage that to the extent where they say to you, look, we could advertise your business on our ship, but we need 60%. Or... They can leave it up to you to go and approach them people one one and, and, and they don't even know anything about you before they reach there. So you gotta remember they market your business before they reach there to give you that advantage over everybody else. So that's that's just general business as far as I could see. But, but I don't I don't knock the cruise lines for what they do and I think they do it very well. My point is this at the end of the day, um, you know, while we may think that while we may think that okay they bring in all the heads and beds, for want of a better phrase. They bring in these heads and beds that are guaranteed or whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, we have a product here that is, that is, it, 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 that is very desirable. I, and, 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 and I don't believe that we, we um, 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 from, a, from a negotiation standpoint with the, with the cruise line, and, and, and I don't think we do a very good job because... When we think about say, when we think about when we, when when you when you, you make the statement about trying to all these deep water harbors around the Bahamas and and yeah we know that these islands are a lot of these islands are very very um, famished in terms of the the, um, the amount of tourism to, uh, amount of tourist activity that come to these islands yes we understand that but. I dare that I, I believe that we have we have a product here that is second to none. I believe that if we if we if we if we um, 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 um <clears throat> if we uh, if we make the cruise lines aware that you know something we we this this thing is something that's that 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 that's that's value much more than what you're offering. I believe I believe with the right negotiation team. And I always said with the right negotiation, we'll be able to get more for the Bahamian people. We are simply, we just simply, we, 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 we kind of, in my opinion, and I could be wrong because I, I've only, I've been in a few of these meetings. I, in my opinion, we just, we just give them the whole hog 
because we say, oh, we need the people to come in, the tourists to come in. The tourists are going to come. These cruise lines have no bunch of, no bunch of new destinations to go to. They, 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 you talk about um, uh, 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 places that are close to the United States in particular, because we're not American market, it's our major market. They don't have no place, no, no bunch of alternatives and whatnot, because at the end of the day, with the price of fuel, and with the, with, the, with, the, with the change in times after 9-11, people are, you know, not so minded to make a bunch of long trips and all that kind of stuff. I think we we, we just selling ourselves a little bit short. But be it as it may, be it as it may, I, 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 your point is taken, but I just feel as though we need to, we need to have better negotiators at the table when it comes to what we're selling, because we're selling ourselves too cheap in my opinion, as, as, as a Bahamian destination. You look at every ship, every yacht boat that is being built today, most 90, I would say 95 plus percent of those yachts are either built for the Mediterranean market or the Caribbean. And when we speak about the Caribbean, we're talking about these same little destinations that are very close to the United States, like like the Bahamas and 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 and. and, and and it's the, the surrounding area, not the deep south, the southern Caribbean, because the weather conditions and, and the like. So I think we said, so I make the statement, I make the very bold statement that most of the yachts that are built for this particular area are built to come to the Bahamas. So we have a, we have a big, big, uh, uh, important product, product that we need to, we need to, to, to see it as that. And, 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 and when people come to exploit it, we need to tell them, hey, Wait a minute. This is um, this is this is what we charging you to to to, to operate in our in our little country, and you pay it or or or, or else. Yeah, Herb, you're absolutely so it's a right. Bit more aggressive in that regard. You're absolutely right as far as the cruise ships and the mega yachts getting the upper hand and negotiating. Again, these cruise ships, some of these cruise ships cost them well over $2, two billion just to build a ship. Um, of course, they, they got to make their money back. They got a lot of staff. They got to pay. Mind you, they got to wear it, but they're making money, right? My thing is, they are going to leverage as much as they could, but yes. if they're going to have the ship and they're going to build the key, um, we ain't bringing nothing to the table as far as spending money to have them make that yeah. arrangement but what we what we can do is we can benefit if we do we, we could sit back and decide how we can benefit now again uh, now on the point of correct and the point of order i have to raise this on the point of order yes sir if they they fill in the key they've already when they sit down and make a decision to build a key they already will have sat down and determined what activities they're going to have on this key what, how is it they're going to benefit them from a, from, a, from a numbers point of view in terms of how much money they're going to make and all that kind of... So this, this is a, strictly, this is a financial decision. This is a money-making decision when they decide to outfit a key in the, in the Bahamas and, and put um, activities on this key for their passengers, all about improving their offering and whatnot. And, and to, the very, to a very large degree... They're improving it at our expense because I don't know. I'm not sure whether or not they really paying what these keys and what these what these uh, 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 islands are really worth. Uh, 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 um, what they really worth and the potential for for earnings for uh, for gen- future generations to come. But hey, we got hundreds of keys. If they take one and they develop it, when are we going to develop one and tell them now y'all could use this? But this is our operation, right? Because at the end of the day, if we had a couple of keys developed, we could tell them we don't want y'all developing no keys in our country to receive cruise ships because we have enough. We have enough places you could come, right? Okay. We we have not we have not done that with one single key. That's we have not done that with do with what? No, but we need. What I'm saying is we need to do it with our islands. And and I got a long list of islands here that that I'm going to indicate where we could put docks for cruise yes, ships but- before the cruise ship themselves go ahead like how they did in Lighthouse Point recently, and say, we're going to put a dock here. And, and, and you see all the flare up we had after they said that. But, but why didn't we go ahead of them and put that dock there? We, we need to be intuitive enough as a people 
to make provisions for those cruise ships so that they wouldn't, they can't even come to us with such a request. Because we'll tell the straight and plain, we already have one there and we don't want no competition. And the thing is, the thing is, Glenn, I, I, I fully endorse what you're saying. But yeah, there's, if you look at, say, for example, the swimming pigs in Exuma, mm-hmm. that activity, that attraction already exists. If a cruise ship goes, if a cruise ship goes to Exuma to the swimming pig or whatever, that attraction already exists. Exactly. Right? And 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 that is predominantly that was predominantly placed there by, by we, us, the Bahamian people, and and tourists have exploited it for years, and it, it came to a point where somebody decided, well, wait a minute, man, um, you know this is this is such a big time attraction, you you ought to be making money off of this or whatever the case may be, right? Right. Um. Well, maybe when the when when it comes to the, the the cruise ship docks and whatnot, we could have such a robust system in place where we say, you know, something any development on any island or whatever the case would be, we send it out to the Bahamian people for the Bahamian people to make a decision on whether or not it's okay for you, for for us to allow you to build a dock here or 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 or. or, or, or or for us to, to make an attempt to raise the capital to build the dock ourselves based on what you think, your business model, and what you think, what you want to do here. But it's just a matter, I think it's best, I, 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 honestly, I, 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 I'm not going to concede on this point. I think <laughs> we have the wrong people negotiating with the cruise lines who are very powerful, and they not aggressive enough in, in, in their effort to look after the, 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 the needs of the Bahamian people. That's the point I'm trying to make. And, and you, you make a good point, A.B., but look at it next week too now. Like I said, I'll, I'll play the devil's advocate for a bit, right? But look at it from this point now. The cruise ships doing what they're doing, and in tandem, we doing what we're doing, right? The cruise ships, you, you don't, I don't think you want to, you want to, you want to, Stifle foreign investment. Now you gotta remember that's foreign investment. We gaining from that no matter what they do. They gotta pay taxes. They gotta pay for this. They gotta pay for. This. They gotta pay all the time. But if they don't put that there, that money the country wouldn't be making, right? So allow them to do what they're doing. But what we need to do is we need to enhance that same operation by building even more facilities that they will be definitely inclined to use, especially those. I'm uh, um, going in areas like, let's say, Disney. Disney got, 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 got one, one spot in the Bahamas, right? About to have two. Now, if they go in, and of course, sometimes they go to the Eastern Caribbean, right? Before they get to this Eastern Caribbean, they got to pass Elutra. They got to pass Cat Island. They got to pass El Salvador. They got to pass Mayaguana. But none of those places can facilitate an overnight stop. None of those places can facilitate that cruise ship going to a dock. We need to look ahead and put something in place so that they will be inclined to want to use that, right? And, and, and one stop per week on one of those islands will change the entire income of that island. So, I agree. I agree that that's so let's work in tandem with these cruise ships. Let, let's not try and stifle foreign um, 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 investment. Let them allow them to, to invest how they want to invest. Well, well at, at the end of the day, Glenn... Um um, I'm not in, 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 I'm not in disagreement with you concerning the possibility of of, 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 of putting additional cruise ship destinations throughout the archipelago um, um, that are owned and operated by Bahamians that would be sold as an incentive to the cruise lines to, to cause them to go to these islands or whatever the case may be. But... Um, at the end of the day, I just feel, just generally speaking, just generally speaking, some of the some of the things and some of the some of the destinations and whatnot, and the associated exploitation has been over the years has been um, there's been a lot of exploitation by the line by the, the various cruise lines, and I just think that we just need to be a little bit more vigilant, a little bit more frugal, a little bit more uh, uh, careful. And, and and negotiations negotiative savvy to 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 ensure that at the end of the day the Bahamian public get the the best of 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 whatever the offering is and so that's that's the point I'm trying to make not that not that I don't agree that that these um, cruise lines bring bring um, a, a, an enormous amount of economic uh, activity to the to, to to islands that are basically um, 
Um, there's nothing there, but um, I just think that at the end of the day, we still have to make sure that we get in the most and the best we can have for the Bahamian people. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. Your, your point is well taken, and, and I want you to know that I fully agree with you. I just wanted to play the devil's advocate a bit to let you know there's yeah. a flip side to that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hear some, some dishes clackling in the back there. You invite me for, for boiled fish and stew fish for a while. What you got going on there? But, but I... I, I... <laughs> But I I would I would want to just segue on to the same topic of boys versus two fish. I, I, I also believe in me this is far from a remove from the topic that you're discussing this evening. No, we have open um, line maritime. Is it maritime or fishing? That's open. that's maritime. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I believe that I believe that um as a country we have to and 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 I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what the fishermen say. I'm not a fisherman. I don't care what nobody says. I believe that we have to, at some point, we need to be have put in place better regular a better regulatory regime for how we manage our fisheries product in this country. It's not going to last forever. I I look at the climate and the fires and the temperature and. And, and and I and I said the whole planet is changing. I look at the the, the Venice and the and the and the Mona gondolas that are that are on dry land and all that. I look at all these different countries that are having all sorts of issues related to fisheries and, and I said we cannot we are not exempted from none of these none of these uh, phenomena that are happening. So we need to make you um, I hope my minister of Responsible for fisheries is, is listening. We need to take this situation in uh, in, the, uh, in hand and put in place measures that's going to cause fisheries in this country to be available for generations yet unborn, uh, or else we're going to be in a hell of a harbor. I can guarantee you that. I wish you wonder, brother Herbie, and we will talk about fishing probably next lap or. But I got another call on the line, so let me just get to that call. Yeah, but I want you, to, I want you to call back because you know some of these islands like me, and and I want you to chime in on 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 where we can put some of these docks. So in, in the meantime, I'll just let you go. But I want you to call back when we get down to some of these far out islands. Okay. okay all right, all right, right my brother. Take care of yourself. Thank you for calling as always. Call on my apology. I seen you on the no, line. No problem, man. That was a great <laughs> call and. Uh... You know, what our problem is, uh, we don't have access to information. Uh, I spent a short period of time, a few years, with Mediterranean Shipping Company. Of course, you know, they own cruise ships along with uh, cargo containers. That's ships. right, MSC. And uh, yeah. the trade, we do get a lot of um, uh, dollars in from each passenger. So what you need to do is, is on, on one of the shows, uh, talk to the cruise ship industry more in depth and bring the information that how much money the trade we get to there's no place I could go because we don't have of information where I could pull the, uh, the negotiated deals for the cruise ships. Um, I could pull how many exact amount of dollars we achieve every every um, year from cruise ships. Cruise ship uh, tourism is one of the, the best business uh, worldwide. And he talked about, mm-hmm. and I'm glad you mentioned about, the Bahamas has uh, a few destinations in the country. We'll transform some of these, these islands. You know, you look at the, the cruise ships through the canals and uh, in Europe, they have high-end special crews on smaller vessels that does stops uh, to various countries on one journey. Absolutely, it's, it's called Viking cruise. Yeah, they got quite, they got quite a few of those. That's right. They got a few of those. Um, they got the Russian company. They got they got the the German company. A couple of them um have small um um cruise ships that carry like like 300, 400 people, and they can get in some of those ports where the big cruise ships can't get. So, and, yeah. yeah. And this is, what, this is the direction we should go. And I, I am very optimistic with this minister, minister of tourism. I think he's forward thinking, and uh, he, 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 he's business driven. Um, I, I remember one time uh, uh, sitting out with some of the seniors at Atlantis. They told me 35% of their income, food and beverage income, comes from the cruise ship. Yep. We don't capitalize on as much of the revenue we could get of these people's pockets. They well, tell me, I think less than, uh, I think, uh, I think about thirty-five or forty-five percent don't come off the ship. But that's true because thousands and thousands of dollars. 
they don't come off the ship because a lot of them be repeat guests and, and they're not in twos about what they can see when they come off the ship um, because they already tried so many things and they'd be like, man, I don't know this, you know, I done that. let me just stay on the ship till I get to the yeah. next port, right? And the thing is, with, with, when you talk about, about cruise ships, head tax, you know, they, they pay a head tax for each person on board. Um, they get a discount based on the amount of people they bring in. They get a discount based on whether they're going to do overnight um, in Nassau Harbor and that type of thing. Because, you know, when they do overnight, they give them some incentive to do overnight. Because okay. because when they do overnight, now you're talking about but the hotels and the casinos making more money, taxi drivers making money, everybody can be making everybody, money from it. Everybody, everybody. So, so they get various incentives. Um, yeah. The Bahamas is the highest head tax in the whole Caribbean. Yeah. Some some Caribbean countries those cruise ships go to, they pay zero for head tax. They they tell the people straight and plain, you want us to come here, you don't want us to come here. Yeah. And they don't play they, they will take advantage of you to the extent that they could. And and like Herbie was saying a minute ago, and he was absolutely right, the cruise ships are gonna play you as hard as they can. And if you don't have good negotiators to the table, they're gonna take advantage of you. And I and I agree. This is Dario Tarelli, by the way. Hey Dario, what's happening? <laughs> man, I tell you you need to get on the show, man. I you <laughs> I, I, I always uh, try on Tuesdays to uh, pay attention to the show. I love it. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it, man. Being in Chippy. Uh, yeah, you're a maritime man in, also. Yeah. You're a maritime man. I don't, I don't want you to... Well, you know I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, man, it's a great show. Uh, it's, a, it's a different perspective from the other talk show. So it brings, brings back some reality on our uh, economy and the revenue stream. Uh, but we have, to be, we have to be very proactive. Uh, I, I have a talk that runs to Airbnb, uh, a personalized uh, tour that I give them uh, a, a taste of this and taste of that to drink uh, for three hours. And, and that's a part-time gig. I have a business running uh, that somebody does stuff me, and it does them. So yeah. these other want to do, these people want to kayak. Uh, yeah. They want to go and go to Fox Hill and go to the road. That's where I take them. They want to taste Dilly. They want to take, taste Mango. They want they want Charmin. They want to see where food on the tree. And yeah. of course, they want to taste the cuisine. So we have to be very, very creative in how we can get those who want to come off the ship and give them something that they can't get no place else. Because, of course, uh, everybody research their destination before they arrive. That's right. And, and if, you, if you get thousands of people coming to you, I mean, you don't have to do anything. They come in. Yeah. And you can find one thing. That, that is intuitive enough for them to want that one thing. And, 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 and you, you can get a thousand sales a day. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's up to us to utilize our intuition to be able to make money off these passengers who we know come in us all the time. Yeah, yeah. We don't, yeah, need, we don't need to they negotiate they nothing with the cruise ship. The cruise ship don't even have to know about that. We just got to be more creative. Uh, I, I agree with him that sometimes we... Uh, Negotiate from a weak point, and that's not only with the cruise, the tourism industry. Yeah, that's general. So that's basically uh, with everything else. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I was taught from a very uh, young age, he owns the man owns the wealth. Indeed. I always get uh, through with the negotiation, but you know, I, 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 I have my opinion politically. Why it happens, but uh, I, I, yeah. I am optimistic. Uh, as country open up, uh, I had to give a presentation to CMA uh, uh, Salvin team today, and uh, the potential of what the Minister of Tourism say for next year is, 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 is looking good. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, Dario, I appreciate you calling in, my brother. Feel free to call anytime. You know, we're on every Tuesday night, so yeah. we'll keep in touch and take care of yourself. Uh, you too, man. All right, my brother. Oh, boy, we had another caller waiting. Caller on the line. This is Maritime Matters. Call. One call. Call. Okay, that caller decided they had enough weight. My apology, caller. But you can feel free to call back um, as we move along. But, you know, that, that Dario Torelli and Herbie Bain, uh, you know, they they good calls. I don't know who I miss, but I'll be, you know, feel free to call back at any time and we'll keep it rolling. Now we're talking about some of these places where we, where, where I think anyway, looking at the map of the Bahamas, where I think cruise ships can be easily accommodated as far as facilitation, where the ocean touched the land, we don't have to do much dredging, and, and, and it's just so many of them. And we go to Abaco and we look at an area like Rocky Point. You know, that's just to the south of Sandy, Sandy Point. And there's no roads leading to that specific area, but you could always cut roads. But if you could get that ship to come from the ocean to you, 
weather is a dock and they could tie up their ship. And you got the taxis and, 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 and the, the, the water sport people and everybody waiting once a cruise ship come and they taking people here, taking people there. It's more than worth running a road from the coast to a highway. Come on. So let's look at places like Rocky Point and Abaco. And, you know, like I say, Abaco used to have a cruise ship anchor off one time ago. We're trying to get away from the anchoring off. Yeah. Is that caller back? Okay. Caller, you're on line one with Maritime Matters. Thank you for calling. Captain Ben. Yes, my brother. Good afternoon to you, sir. And a uh, pleasant good evening to you, my brother. You know, as I sat, as I sit and listen to you, I am not well knowledgeable like you and Captain Bain. <laughs> and I listen to the knowledge that you all uh, 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 display this afternoon on this radio. Yep. And I hope the powers that be will take a pen and make note of what you and Captain Bain and the gentleman just a moment ago share. But I'm, 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 I'm wondering, uh, the two Bains, <laughs> why the next bean cannot use his influence of getting the bigger bean on the show? I just can't get that. <laughs> Dr. Uh, P. Uh, I think in studio, you know, he will be more, he will be more relaxed and informed. I, I am, my passion is not that, you know, my passion is the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one yeah. day I hope that we will, 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 will try to, to, to greet for the court and talk about the family, the state that the family is in. But, uh, Maritide is your passion and Mr. Bain passion. I, I, am I'm, I'm, I'm being informed and I'm being educated <laughs> and I, I will, I will soon get to where I can participate in your conversation. So I, I encourage you to get Captain Bain on, on the radio, in studio with you. <laughs> And, and uh, I would like to be right there to be the referee uh, and, and listen to, to be you all as you all share your knowledge. So, uh, so continue. Good work, sir. Thank you, Dr. P. You are so kind. But we have to do a show for the family just for you, my friend, because you, I, I, you know, I always listen to you on your call-ins. And, well, and, and and you got it. You well, got it down we, back, we could, we could do a good show. Uh, 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 I, I hope you would touch the state of Portiski Dock. The but, condition of Portiski Dock that... that I think that should come under your watch marathon, right? We had an entire show on that last week. Dr. P, you missed that show? I missed that. I mean, it's, 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 it's deplorable. You cannot... I, I hope I, I'm not digressing from your topic. No, 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 no. It's the, the, deplorable to take your family out there on Portiski Dock. I don't know who is the power that be, but that dock is in terrible, terrible state. I, 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 I am of the belief that people now are using the sea to release their CCs, uh, uh, and, and, and that's a concern, because I don't know if the bottom uh, on board the ski dock is probably working, but you you know, you cannot take your family, it's a good environment, I mean, the place it can be, but you have to be very careful, you know, my profession is, 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 is strictly about hygiene, and I, I think uh, board the ski dock needs some great attention in terms of, 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 of concern and, and hygiene, in terms of hygiene. God knows that it's in a deplorable state in terms of hygiene. Dr. P, you are absolutely right. But what I want you to do for me, do me a little favor. Just go on YouTube, pull up Maritime Matters Bahamas, and that show last week on Portiski Dock, I just want you to listen to that. We had some big-time callers on that show, man. We had, we had people who designed um, 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 Portiski Dock Improvement Plan, and it didn't work. You just need to listen to that show, and all of what you're talking about now, we talk about the, the sewage plan on Porter's Key, and how they need to move it, relocate it, because it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to always cause the count to get poisoned, and we assume that's what causing the count to get poisoned. We talk about all the traffic on Porter's Key on a busy day. We talk about, 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 about using a, a private partner um, 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 relationship, whether it is public Pat, private partnership so that we can have security on Porter's Key. You can't drive with no more. You can only walk. We, we talk about the full gambit of what could happen with Porter's Key. I want you to just, 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 just YouTube that show and, and, and all of what your concerns with us now, I think would be answered, my friend.
Well said. Okay, Mr. Bain, I will, I will allow other, other, other persons I would like to hear Captain Bain call back in. And I, 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 like, I like to hear him touch on Porter's key dog because I don't know if he still can play domino, but he used to play domino there. Uh, he tried, he tried. I know he used to try to play domino, but I don't know how good he is, how, how good is he now. He might, might, might get a little old and lose his, you know, but Porter's key is not a proper place for him to go there in that kind of environment and he had all that. That 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 bacteria and all that for him to play domino. So uh, I would like for him to call back and give us a million put on board. Skid off. I with you, my brother. But I, I just want you to know it. we're gonna get to Auckland soon, and and I I have places in Auckland where I think a dock could to accommodate cruise ship could go. So I I want I I want you to listen to that part as well. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much indeed, my friend. Take care. Yeah. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the great Doctor P. I appreciate him so much for calling. He called the show once or twice before. I wanted to know I I, I count. So <laughs> he's not a maritime, quite a maritime figure, but you know he, he he always give that contribution and that encouragement, and I appreciate him so much for that. Um, we'll be at Abaco and we pass Rocky Point. We want Eleuthera. Are we moving to Eleuthera? Yeah. Oh, we got another call. Just hold the line. Let's see what our caller has to say. Call you on maritime matters. Good night to you and thank you for calling. Good night, Captain. Good night, man. I'm in top shape, my friend. How are you? I'm okay. I, I, I only call, be sure I say, I only call, the gentleman just now with Dr. P, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's Dr. P. You know, he, he calls, he calls, he's, he, he, he's not, I don't know if he, he calls as much show as you, but he calls quite often to talk about I mean, family I matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing, man? How you doing, brother? I'm okay, I'm okay. But other than my Dr. P, this is ironic, right? I call Dr. P to the end of the day, Dr. P. Uh, we're trying to explore us. I will get a haircut. Oh, I use get a haircut there too? Man, you just go to the big time barber like that? I'm going to the big time barber. Small time barber. Well, that's what I got. I answer that. All right. But I'm, uh, I, I call Dr. P and Dr. P like, and you, you, you should go better than my family. You got to go to my family. You know, he's a good family. I don't know if he's a good family. But you know, he's, 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 you call my nephew, so and you take over his show. <laughs> no man, you you know better than that. Doctor P, Doctor P, know better than that. But <laughs> you, 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 so what you think with this cruise ship being being accommodated I mean, in other islands of the Bahamas? I know, I know, I mean, I can't say for flat, but it's known that cruise ship, ship uh, they, they, they deal with high pollution and they, they talk about air, the top of the beaches and stuff in the water, driving and getting ripping up all the reef and things. Yeah, that's why we want them to go to docks. We don't even want them to drop no anchor. We ain't talking about tendering. We ain't talking about anchoring. We're talking about finding a place on a family island where the ocean touches the land and putting but a I dock out there. I didn't even mention them Powell's Point. You've been using the Grand Tour Flowers, but not touching the land. Powell Point? Yeah, KB Luther. Yeah, yeah I, I only Luther now. I got Powell Point. I got Little Little Bluff. I got Jack's Bluff. I got um um uh, right you there. Listen, you listen Powell Point. That's a my way from the Navy base where, where they have KB Luther Resort. Right now they're in the island school there. Yeah, I have Powell Point on my list. I have that written down. That's what I'm telling you. I got deep water to the ocean, man. Yeah. Huh? Also, Red Rocks, Bamboo Point. I got all them listed. PowerPoint is the first one I put down for you, Lutra. Okay, 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 okay. Because I, I know that that's that, 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 one of the best questions in the bag there, too. Many of them. Okay. Open too. Hey, you know what? I mean, one, 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 one of my, like, they say, you know, I live in this PowerPoint, right? Mm-hmm. And one of them in an after school, I, I got a little bit of a on, like, right there, I'm on, on the separate island. Like, Chalk is to come there, too. Chalk, where we are. Chalks, oh yeah? Oh, I thought Chalks only used to go to Bimini. I didn't know they went to the truck. That's what I'm thinking of in 1973. Okay, beautiful. You know, and, and, and I'm thinking about it, I'm going to see him after school. Yeah. And like, you know, we've we, we gone out on, on like, on, out, out there from, from, the, from the point to their chalk line, right? Right. And that's like the current, there's a constant current in this and that they, they will never look to, 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 to,
the current is always right there. Always strong, yeah. yeah right I'm there. talking about it. And you can see all the CV and everything there, depending on which direction the car is coming, all the time it's coming in and out. That's right. And it's, 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 like, it's, it's like an engine, but you don't know how to see energy from it. But you know what? I remember after the rest, like we went on the beach, remember when he in the water, because murky out there, right? Yeah. But, but six feet or eight feet out here, they just call it. Like, I don't see nothing. I mean, he straight down the beach. Every time, every couple of like, Yeah. Like, 50 feet, that's what he's talking about. You, you, you see anything? I say, no. <laughs> Let me get to the end of the beach. I got like 250 talk on, on the last. Where did he get up? Look at these stuff. Where did he say? Wow. I said, I take that up, you know. That's going to be good. Well, I'm just looking for nothing. <laughs> yeah, so, that's what it's called about there. So right? how you feel? how you feel yeah. about... How you how you feel about a cruise ship going to Powell Point? Um, what what significant yeah, difference do you think that would be? I guess it could be a good thing as well as a bad thing, you know. Because I mean, like, when we take an offer to stay in line to give or to, to basically sell, because I hear you earlier in the history you mentioned that certain kids are purchased by the school ship, the next key purchased by the next school ship, the next, you know, all of that. Yeah. And, and what the, what went to my mind is that, you know, all these kids who are the money. The money. But that's why we that's why we need that's why we need to ensure that we put docks in places so that when they come to us where they have private people who own these land that they could get money from, no, we tell them no because we, we already have a dock in that area that you could utilize. See that's that's where we need to get. We need to go ahead of them now. We can't wait for them and don't have an option. So we but have to tell them okay. No, they they got they don't have no they land. They don't have uh, no land. Even if they have the land, they gotta get approval. You know, they could have all the money, land they want, money, money, but money but they gotta have approval for that ship to come there. Yeah, so the once, yeah, money, they money. The, they got the millions and the billions and and and, and we got hundreds of thousands. And no, we got a lot. We got a lot of money. You, you see what happened to Prince George Wharf recently? When they they say they they say they want they do an IPO to raise funds, they got the payment people to to to, to give in hundred and fifty million dollars. And plenty of people got some money back because they didn't allow them. They only allowed them to buy so much. Yet. See, you got to remember, Bahamians are prepared to invest so long as they know that this is solid investment, right? So we could do all of this, you know. We we just need to stop fearing each other and set it up properly, and this could happen. Yeah, but we can invest, right? But, but I mean, like, look, look at the foreign investors. We come in with thousands trying to make a million or a million trying to make a billion, right? Right? And these people, they, they simply buy this up, they will a couple of billion dollars to think, and they can sort of out that money. And what do you think went into show? But you know, the cruise ship tried to, try to buy the rights to do Prince George Wharf and the government and them now. They have money, you know. They have more money probably than, 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 than the entity that actually got the bid to do it. But what I'm saying to you is, yes, they may have money. But we also have, if we could do our poor development um, with Bahamian money, and we could do Prince George Wharf with Bahamian money, those little things on the family islands is a joke. They ain't going to need it's, over to... Bahamian money, but I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like, that's the group of 19 you're talking about, right? No, I, mean, I, I talk about... I talk about um, our keyboard development. Well, our key, our keyboard development could have been done fully by people like me and you, if because we had enough. You know, I, I myself got plenty of money back because they didn't allow me. They only, they limit you to how much you could have invested. Because they don't want you. Because they, because they, they want, they, they had preferences. But now, if we take the lead in this, they wouldn't have no preference. Everybody would have the same ability to invest. And all I'm saying is if we set it up properly, we can be our own keepers of the, where these cruise ships go in the, in the eastern, the south, southeastern Caribbean, cause, I mean, southeastern Bahamas, because there's a lot of room for expansion in, in those areas that we need to get ahead of them and don't just sit back and let them buy it out and then complain. We need to get ahead of them and we need to set it up and then they wouldn't have any option other than the use that we put in place. Yeah, hey, hey, but Captain Van, right? Mm-hmm. I remember, remember last time I called you, I was talking about this whole building thing with these children. I think we should still look at, at some, I mean, I mean, the country should look at something like that, you know. I mean, yeah, I got a boat builder, like I got a boat builder like coming on the show like, real soon. Yeah, um, around, you think, huh? I got a boat builder, the fellow who did, who did a book on boat building in the Bahamas for men's we came. Uh-huh. Um, Kendall Butler, he's, he's agreed to come on the show really soon. So and, where is the season for Nassau? Yeah, yeah, he's an Asovian. He was, he, 
I'm not sure which part of Nassau Kendall was from, but I know he did he did a, a vast amount of research on boat building throughout the Bahamas. And he Everything did a boat building, he's a researcher. Yeah, he but he did a book he did a book based on his research. So he can tell us he can tell us who are all the boat builders. Well, that's, that's, I mean, if, 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 if you want information and you, you really want to get it from people who research the topic, eh? Yeah. So we, we'll have him on the show to, and he, he have a lot of wealth of it because I talked to him a couple of times about it. He even told me about my granddaddy. I didn't even know my granddaddy um, 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 built boats to the extent that he found out when he did his research. But I, I mean, I, I mean that's, that's what I found out. But what I'm saying is he'll be on the show and he'll address boat building because you brought that up last time about boat building in the Bahamas, and you know the the, the, the Abaco um, whalers. Yeah, Abaco has some boat builders. They, they were, they, they, you, yeah. you, you had to order them three and four years in advance in order to get one of them, because that's the kind of demand yeah. they had. That's they, the Abaco skiff, right? The Abaco skiff, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, my brother, always good to hear you on, on Maritime Matters, and feel free, you know, this this, this all our show, so. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, but I, I just have to make sure I don't try to take away so good. Yeah, yeah. Ethan, you, 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 you did natural, No, um, I think, I think Herbie, Herbie Bain, the other Bain, uh, okay, who calls okay, the show, okay, is, okay. is, they, they are family. Um, uh, they, they're both from Auckland's. My people are out on Abaco, Crossing Rocks, and Sandy Points, and that's where, that's, that's the Bains where I come from. And, uh, yeah, my so people. Today, like, always, you have, you have a great show, and, you know, keep up with that way, man. I appreciate it, my brother, so yeah, Um, yeah, we'll keep in touch, man, and you take care yourself. Yes, sir, you, you too, also. All right, buddy. Yes, that's my good friend, Brother Simonet. Um, he and I met met on Porter's Key Dock, actually. He came out there to do a little project. He's a very good entertainer. I don't know if he entertains per se, but I know I heard the songs that he did, and they were, they were off the chain. Um, so we reached Elutra, and, and as Brother Simonet just pointed out, they got a place in Elutra called Powell Point where the ocean comes very close to the land, and that's just, just north of... Um, just north of Cape Elutra, which has a marina, a big marina. Um, I think probably the largest marina they get in Elutra. And just south of that is Little Bluff, and they got one called Jack's Bluff. Well, of course, they don't have any road leading to them, but they, the ocean touches the land again, so they could put an abutment there. Right off Gregory Town, to the north side of Gregory Town, they got red rocks and, and bamboo point and those type of things. Um, there's a possibility you could put one there. And that area where, where um, the glass window bridge is, that again is a, is, is, is a pretty deep area where the ocean comes very, as you know, the glass window is the ocean. Is the only thing separate the ocean from the banks is that glass window bridge. Yeah? So, so we already know that ocean comes right up to the land. And, you know, when, when it's, it's normally choppy when, when it's choppy weather, but most of the year, at least 80% of the time, it wouldn't be too bad for a cruise ship. And um, so we can look at Elutra as one of those. It looks like our time is winding down. How do, how do I lose time so fast? I got all these islands. I hope you see what you do to me. <laughs> we may have to take this up another, another time. Cat Island, I look, I'm looking at Hawk's Nest. So those of you from Cat Island, Hawk's Nest, that's where the ocean goes very close to land. Um, we got San Salvador. In San Salvador, we got, well, of course, we got Coburn Town, and we got an area just to the southwest there called Sandy Point. And we don't know if there's any other areas, but looking at the map, or the chart, I should say, those are the two areas where I see the ocean coming very close to land. Exuma, well, you got Rocus Point. In the Rocus Point area, they got, they got something called Sol Pond Point. That soil pond point has deep water, deep enough, where you can jettison a jetty going out into the water for cruise ship to attach to. Uh, I think that's the same area where you got the hotel and all the rest of that stuff. But we got to negotiate a way to use that point for cruise ships to come straight in and let off their passengers. Um, Stocking Island, we can do the same thing. But of course, once they get on Stocking Island from the ocean side, because we could put a, a dock on the ocean side of Stockton Island, and then they will have to ferry them to and from Georgetown. And that's, that's, of course, protected waters, easy ferry operation. You wouldn't have to worry about a ferry coming straight up to the boat and, and bouncing up and down. So I think that would be a good fix for Exuma as far as Stocking Island and ferrying them from the next side of Stockton Island um, in and out of Georgetown. You get um, White Horses Bluff, 
Um, then you get Great Guana Marina on the opposite side of that. So it's a lot of tough stuff going on. Long Island, we get Clarence Town. And then to the south of Clarence Town, a little further down, we got Dunmore. Dunmore has deep water. We have the ocean going straight into Dunmore. So why can't we put a jetty off Dunmore and then connect that jetty to the roadway so that we can now have people, cruise ships, dropping people directly onto Long Island? And again, okay, oh now we got another call and I got another two minutes. My producer said I could take the call. My goodness. Call you on line one, Maritime Matters. Thank you very much for calling. Yes, Captain Ben, I just had to, <laughs> to chime in on this on this one. You you actually indicating you, you I, there's a point that I want to I want to throw this into the mix. Yes, sir. Uh, what you're saying, uh, what you're saying is absolutely correct, and, and I I think you right on point. But how do we get past this whole concept of selling this to? In our society, we have a very polarized society, as you would, would be aware. Now, building dock and that type of maritime related construction is very expensive. So, it it may it may be that that um, a dock or a particular island might be the benefactor of a dock that can accommodate a cruise ship, or the project may start and run into another. You know, we we change governments. Relatively, we, 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 we go to the polls every five years, and normally, because of our politics, we, we, um, we don't continue things as they ought to continue projects. So I think uh, the broader discussion, I think you need to throw this in the mix, but the broader discussion needs to be, we have to have uh, a national plan um, for this type of development so that if it is not completed in in, 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 in one term of government, it, 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 it is not abandoned in the other term if a new government takes power, whatever the case may be. Because these are cheap dock facilities are cheap investments. They are major millions and millions of dollars in investment and, and we have to have a plan that, that that drives this. And so while it is very good that you're pointing out all these various uh, places that could possibly accommodate cruise ships that we should consider. I think we need to, first and foremost, we need to come to a place where we as a country decide that this is going to be our national development plan moving forward, and this is how we're going to address it. These are the priority islands, uh, island number one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. These are what the costs going to be uh, associated with these particular projects, and and this is how we're going to fund it, and hopefully successive governments, we can buy it, but we can have a national plan that won't change. So I just want to drop that in the air here and show that as we continue this discussion, and this is a, um, we, could, we, we, we make sure that the, the persons, that we, we put this in the forefront of this discussion because this is going to become important when it comes to continuity. That's yeah. the point I'm trying to make. <clears throat> Very good point, Harry, but let me just, before you hang up, let me just say, before I got started, I did indicate, and you know, we, we did a show last week about Porter's Key, and we said how we approach getting Porter's Key to be ironclad. You need to have a PPP. You need to have a private-public partnership so that once you engage that private-public partnership, no matter who's in government, the other government cannot do anything with it because it's going to be ironclad. It's going to be just like how they did APD and, 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 and how they're doing PGW and all the rest of it. We got to make sure that is taken care of before we even get started. Indeed, indeed. Thank you, sir. Indeed. Thank you for the observation, and we'll keep Thank in touch. Thank you very much. You, you say I can't come for boil fish tonight, so tell me when I can come. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 for sure. <laughs> yes, my brother. <laughs> my good friend, maybe. Oh, that's the best friend in the world. He don't lay it down. Okay, Ragged Island. We got Ragged Island Point. We need to go. My producer saying, give me two more minutes. All right. We got Ragged Island Point. I see nothing else. Well, that's on the other side of Gun Point. Gun Point is on the inside. We want us on the outside. Let's put a nice dock out on the Ocean Point out there. And cruise ships would be able to... You can remember Ragged Island is a very strategic place in the Bahamas. If they're coming um, along Cuba, the, the, the last island they will pass is Ragged Island before they reach Bimini. They got to go all the way around the South Andres, the Great Bahama Bank between then, Key Style, the San Aran Channel and all that, and, and, and they're going straight towards the state. So once they pass Inagua, 
Ragged Island is, is the stop. Many of them would like to stop the Ragged Island on the way back home so they could have one final overnight on an island or a place where there are pe- where where people. So Ragged Point is a perfect spot to put that dock for them to stop to. Rum Key, can't leave you all out. Y'all get Sandy Point there. I know you all ain't going to road out there, but let's put one dock on Sandy Point and watch how quick them roads will come. Because once you get cruise ships coming there with thousands of people, we're going to have to make it happen. Crooked Island, well, Landreal Point was always there. Now, we know Landreal Point is the deepest point. We're going to make a dock. We, that's where the mail boats go now. So, you know, it wouldn't be too difficult to get a cruise ship um, um, dock out there. Once we clear the area out a little bit more, we don't even have to clear it out. Let's do a little bit more dredging because that's a big, wide, open area. Make water, I don't know. We get Betsy Bay, but, you know, you got plenty of beaches and whatnot. But then you get Devil's Point to the southwest. Let's try to get something out there somewhere, and all that is possible, yeah? Inagua, I ain't leaving you all out. My good friend, Adrian, um, and Derek, of course, they cousins, the Farquharson boys. We would say put a dock to the west of that airstrip because that's where the deep water is. Or you could go north up to Farquharson Beach, but we don't want you putting docks on beaches. Mind you, you could do it because they did it in Bimini. You just put pilings all the way out. So there are ways to do it. And people... I say that is the Bahamas circumnavigated dockwise. We can do this. Thank you for all of my great callers. You were all very good tonight and you contributed heavily. And I say to the rest of you, thank you very much for listening to Maritime Matters. We're going to be here next week, Tuesday, with a different show. We're going to have a guest. And yeah, we're going to do this, man. So with that, I thank my good producer, Mr. Craig Gibson, for giving me the extra time and for, for waiting on me. Don't, it wasn't him who was late. It was me who was late tonight. But it's all good. And with that, people, I say Maritime Matters out.